In our national lead now, the acting Customs and Border Protection Commissioner is out. John Sanders is leaving effective July 5th, giving no specific reason for his departure, though his exit comes amid the escalating humanitarian crisis at the border and widespread criticism of the facilities in which migrant children are being kept. Democrats in the House are currently fighting about legislation that would provide approximately $4 billion to pay for housing for undocumented immigrants and their children. Progressive Democrats have said they're worried some of the money could be used for other purposes and to support President Trump's hardline policies. Speaker Pelosi is telling Democrats, however, that the money is, quote, for the children, funding diapers, food, blankets, beds, and other necessities. CNN's Sunland Serfati is on Capitol Hill, and CNN's Nick Valencia is in Clint, Texas, outside a border facility housing children, one that has been widely criticized by human rights lawyers for being neither safe nor sanitary. Let's start with Sunland. Sunland, a, a meeting among House Democrats about this funding bill was described by one member as very tense. Where do things stand right now? Well, things, Jake, up here on Capitol Hill have been very fluid all day, but a deal between Democratic leadership and House progressives who, at the start of this day, have been very unhappy with this bill, it does seem to be emerging now at this late hour. Tell, sources tell CNN that leadership in the House, they do now believe that they have everyone within their caucus on the same page, that they've been working for a considerable amount of this day to um, bring everyone in, to make changes, make uh, last tweaks to the final legislative text specifically to try to appease progressives who had been very unhappy earlier in the day. They wanted additional guardrails to be added, uh, as one member described a short time ago, to, to ensure that migrant children are protected more and a potentially a very good sign for leadership just in the last few hours. Congresswoman Jayapal, she's, who is the co-chair of the uh, Progressive Caucus, she says that she's happy with the changes that leadership has now made, and including new language outlining the minimum conditions for care, which she says cannot be waived. Democratic leadership, Jake, are still pushing to hold a vote on this later today in the House, and they are projecting confidence when it hits the floor. They believe it will pass. All right, Sutherland, thanks. Let's go now to, to Clint, Texas, to that border facility where Nick Valencia is. It was called unconscionable by doctors, advocates, lawyers. President Trump said this afternoon he's very concerned about the conditions at these places. Nick, nearly 250 children were moved from the facility behind you after the horrific conditions were revealed, but you're learning that some of those transferred kids are now being moved back to that same facility? Yeah, an estimated 100 migrants are being moved back, child migrants are moving back, and the concern, of course, Jake, is that they're going right back into the very conditions that they were moved from, that they were called, uh, legal monitors called unconscionable. The decision to move these children back was because, according to Customs and Border Protection, there was no longer concern about overcrowding. But the details that we're getting from those independent monitors who visited this facility last week are just heartbreaking. Children sleeping on the floor, some with no mattresses, teenagers going up to three weeks without having a shower, children essentially left to fend for themselves. And earlier on a phone call with Customs and Border Protection, they used the time to highlight the progress that they've made, saying that they are stretched thin by the resources that they have currently and the influx of migrants. Here in the El Paso sector, they're dealing with uh, triple the amount of migrants that they had at the same time last year. This much is clear. There is a lot of politics being played while the lives of thousands of children hang in the balance. Jake. All right, Nick Valencia in Clinton, Texas. Thanks so much. Let's chew over all this with our, our uh, experts. Uh, Laura, let me start with you. Um, the suspicion among progressives in the House is that some of this money will be enabling of the Trump administration. But the, the acting eight, uh, Department of Homeland Security uh, uh, Secretary uh, McAleen and Kevin McAleen, and he's been warning for months and months and months that this crisis was going to happen and he needed this money, most of it, three billion of it, for facilities for kids. Right, but the progressives are worried that now that the acting uh, CBP director is stepping down, chief is stepping down, that they, that these are agencies that are in chaos, that they don't know where the money is going, and so what they really want is some kind of enforcement mechanism, that if this money is then directed to go to DHS and CBP that they have some kind of, quote, hammer, as Mark Pocan of Wisconsin put it. He's another leader of, of the Progressive Caucus. They want an enforcement mechanism, uh, stronger language in there. And they did get a few concessions last night that makes them happier. And part of that is making sure that there are standards for hygiene and nutrition um, at these detention facilities for these children migrants. And, and for want of a better term, let's uh, say that the acting DHS uh, Secretary McAleenan is, a, is, a, is pragmatic. And then the, uh, versus uh, some of the others in the administration who are hardliners, just for simplicity's sake. Uh, his now outgoing replacement at, uh, at CBP, Customs and Border Protection, uh, is resigning 
What does that mean? Does that mean that a hardliner will be put in there necessarily? That seems to be what the administration has done in the past, but I don't think we know yet. In, to Laura's point, these are agencies in chaos. The, there isn't a lot of clarity about who is actually driving the car other than the president himself. And we also have an administration that he doesn't like to put permanent people in these positions. And, with, and so that in and of itself creates a lot of instability. And you can see how things aren't being followed through. Uh, independent monitors are the ones who had to whistleblow about these facilities. And it, it really is, um, you can understand why there is a lot of mistrust among members of Congress with this administration, because there isn't anyone driving the train. And we're just learning actually right now that the acting chief of ICE, Mark Morgan, who is considered a hardliner, uh, is expected to take over as acting commissioner of Customs and Border Protection. That's according to an official. Take a listen uh, to what Morgan said back in January about some of these detained minors. I've been in the detention facilities where I've walked up to these individuals that are so-called minors, 17 or under, and I've looked at them and I've looked at their eyes, Tucker, and I said, that is a soon-to-be MS-13 gang member. It's unequivocal. <clears throat> He's now going to be overseeing the situation, Paul. What an idiot. I'm sorry. You can, you really, is he like the amazing Kreskin? He can look in the eyes of a child and decide whether he's going to become a gang member, and he is going to be running this? It, what we're doing to these children is inhumane. Uh, I have to say, that the, the Democrats, now that they have real power, they're going to have to govern, not just oppose. And, and, you know, the progressive caucus needs to be for progress. It sounds like they are. It's just like Pelosi's pulled her people together. But for our, so it looks like Nancy Pelosi's doing her job as speaker, which is to make progress and try to help these children, even if some, some of the money goes to things that they don't support. That's practical progress. That's good. For this man to say something that hateful, that racist, uh, about children, it's really shocking. It, it does seem to me that, that while this might appeal to the president's base, this is a horrible issue for Republicans writ large uh, going into an election season. Yeah, and by, and by the way, I agree with you. It seemed to be like an audience of one there in that clip that we saw. But yeah, I mean, ultimately, the, the, what happens is the command and control structure, when it um, collapses like this, um, people's belief that the, that the government can get and solve crisis problems like this um, it begins to wane. And when that begins to wane, you have, um, you have people that sort of worry about how this plays politically. So I think what, the, what Republicans really like is the contrast that you're seeing up on Capitol Hill, which is getting to fight over who's to blame here and who's politicizing it more often. But one of the big problems is that if you're in charge and your job is to run an effective government and the government doesn't look effective, I think that becomes a problem for the administration. Uh, as, it, as, as this goes on. Take a listen, uh, Laura, to uh, Tim Ryan, the congressman from Ohio who's running for president uh, in the Democratic primaries. He had some words for President Trump over this border crisis. He wants this to be a political issue. This is what he wants. Every single day, he's in the news about being tough on immigrants. Well, go fix the damn problem. He's not a leader. He's not a leader at all. He is a, uh, a, a TV host. You know, he, he's, he's running the apprentice out of the White House and kids are suffering. And so the issue for Democrats is presenting an alternative because they know that Trump is going to be talking about this the way he did in 2016, all through 2020, um, releasing uh, more hardline proposals. Uh, and so that's why Pelosi really wants this bill to get passed today. She told members in a caucus meeting this morning, if you vote against this bill, it's a vote for Trump. And we don't want to show that weakness when we're about to put this on the floor. And, and take a listen uh, to Republican Congressman Michael Burgess. He represents a district outside Dallas talking about these detention facilities for children. You know what? There's not a lock on the door. Any child is free to leave at any time, but they don't. And okay. you know why? Because they're well taken care of. He's the chairman of the House Subcommittee on Health. You know why they don't leave? Because they're six years old. Well, yeah, that's a suboptimal answer. And I believe he was talking about a different facility, not mm -hmm. the one in, in mm -hmm. Clint. Um, yeah, so if, if that, that is not what Republicans want to put out there. And you're going to be hearing Democrats contrast this in the debate tomorrow night. Um, and it, it really is. It, it's a shocking thing to say. But yeah, these are little kids. These are toddlers that were in this Associated Press report that we all read the other day.